You are what I'm looking for. everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be using the Minte Spring Is Here 6x6 paper pad to create some pretty simple but beautiful cards. I'm also going to be using the P13 Spring Ephemera Bits. I basically wanted to show you that you can mix and match your products. You don't have to use all of the same brand. You can mix up whatever you've got to create some fun and cute little cards using whatever you might have in your stash. Now I flipped through this paper pad and what I love about Minte's paper pad is that there are three of each design. So I can comfortably take one of each piece of paper and not feel no way about not using the back. So that's kind of fun. And I still have two of each pattern left in a little booklet so that I can always enjoy those later. So I'm going to start with these mini little cut aparts. One of the sheets has these little tiny rectangles that I'm going to cut apart and we'll use those throughout on some of the card projects and whatever's left over I can always use on envelopes and things like that. I'll dig through them just like I dig through the ephemera to use them on some of my cards. So once those are all cut out, I'm going to set them aside. So I've got everything all prepped and ready. I've got some card bases, some pattern paper picked out, and these ephemera, and we're going to start to make some cards. So I'm taking the first piece and I'm cutting it in half at three inches. And then as an afterthought, I thought I should cut this down so that I have a nice border around the edge of my card. So I cut this down to four and a quarter inch. So I end up with two panels that measure three by four and a quarter. And this will give me a nice margin around the outside of my card and with a couple of nice scraps left over. So I brought in some black cardstock to create a matte layer around my pattern paper. I'm gonna cut this down just an eighth of an inch larger than three by four and a quarter. So it just has a little tiny skinny little border. If you have dies that could cut this to make it simpler, um, I don't have any dies this size, so I just added an extra eighth of an inch, and this worked out perfectly. So I'm just adding some double-sided adhesive, and I'm going to adhere these panels down to the black cardstock. And I think this just gives the perfect little pop. It's a very sort of watercolor washy looking fluffy cloud, and that little bit of black creates, I don't know, like a separation between the card base and just allows it to pop. So I really love the way that looks. So I'm making two of the exact same card and then I'm just gonna dig through that ephemera and see what I can find that matches nicely. And I figured these little tiny cut aparts would be perfect, just centered up on the card and I decided to go with two sort of window scenes. I thought that was cute. So I'll grab some black cardstock scraps and I'm gonna mat these little panels onto black cardstock as well. And I'm just using my trimmer to cut those out and I'm just eyeballing here, there's no measurement. I just stuck the little pieces down onto the black cardstock and trimmed them out. So I'm gonna grab some foam squares and I'm gonna pop these up on foam squares and I'm just using a little pick tool and it helps me pick up those little tiny foam squares. This is probably, I don't know, the, the only thing I hate doing in crafting. I hate pulling the little tiny backs off of these foam squares, it drives me nuts. I end up having them all stuck to me and sometimes I miss them and anyways. I grabbed a little bit of liquid glue. I'm just gonna pop a drop of liquid glue on the back of each of those foam squares just to make sure that they adhere to the card and don't fall off. And also it gives me a second just to kind of wiggle it into place to make sure that it's perfectly centered. And I also have a pair of reverse tweezers as well just to kind of eyeball it to make sure it's centered without my fingers being in the way. All right, and there we go, that is complete. And here's a close up look at those cards. I'm gonna come back at the end of this video and do sentiments for all my cards, but I'm gonna make the cards first and show you the layouts. So here's the second one. I love these soft, beautiful spring colors and these cute little delicate images, so pretty. All right, so moving on to the second set of cards. Now this one had two beautiful sides and the rainbow won out. I really love this pastel spring Easter colored rainbow. It's so pretty. So I'm just going to mat this onto some Recollections shimmer cardstock. 
I have this little booklet of beautiful spring colors and it's a really pretty shimmer cardstock. So I just created the same idea, the three and four and a quarter inch panel with a little border around it. And then I'm gonna add a couple of the ephemera pieces to these. And I thought these were just so cute and simple and I didn't wanna overdo it. I picked two die cuts for each card a little floral element in the corner, and I'm putting that diagonally across from the cute little Easter friend we've got hanging out in the corner here. So I have a little bunny and a little yellow chick, and those are so cute. So I pop those guys up onto some foam squares as well with some of that liquid adhesive, and I'll pop them onto their cards. For the second die cut element, I'm just adhering that straight down to the card. So here's a look at these two cards, the cute little chick with a little spring bouquet of flowers and a soft pastel rainbow. And then here's the, the second one with the bunny. This is my favorite. I think this is my favorite card out of the entire batch. It's so cute. All right, let's move on to card number three. So we're gonna make two cards with the same pattern here for this one as well. For this card, I really loved this gorgeous scene. And when I realized that if I cut it right down the middle, I'll still have the scene. I won't miss any of the window panels and it'll still be recognizable for what it is. So we have a window and a shutter on one panel and a window and a shutter on the second. And I'm just gonna run those down the center of the cards. I grabbed another piece of that shimmer cardstock and I'm just gonna cut down half inch strips. I want to line this up on the side of each of the panels. I'm gonna have this image run from the top to the bottom of the card with this little teal border on the outside. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit of adhesive down the side of the panel, the left and the right, and then I'll take the little strip and just eyeball it and line it up so that it kind of creates a border on the left and right. And then the top and the bottom of the pattern paper will reach edge to edge on the card base. So you'll see what I mean in just a sec. So I've got the first strip lined up and then I'm gonna line up the second strip onto the other side. And we're gonna make both cards the exact same way. So I have enough strips cut out to do the second panel as well. So I'm just gonna adhere this down to the center of my card and voila, that's it. I'm not gonna do anything else. This card is super busy already, but the pattern is just gorgeous. I don't want to mess around with it. I like it just like that. So here is a look at the first card, which is the right side of the window pane. And then here is a look at the left side of the window pane. I don't think we lost anything on these images. Super pretty. And this one has a little chick and bunny in the corner. Really nice. All right, so next piece of pattern paper, I wanted to try something different, something I've never done before. I thought this was a kind of a, a cool layout that I haven't really seen done, and what I like about it is the amount of waste that you get here. Watch this. I'm gonna take a piece of six by six pattern paper, and I'm gonna cut it across at an angle. So all the way down, right at an angle, you still get that beautiful window frame on the top piece as well as on the bottom piece with all the beautiful florals around it. So I lined it up to the top corner of my card and then I trimmed off the two little pieces. And what I realized is that that other little piece we can add to the card and fill in that white space and it looks really cool. So I have some more of that shimmer cardstock and I cut little quarter inch strips this time and I'm just gonna line it up to the edge of the pattern and then cut off the excess. And then here's where I thought I could use that other tiny little scrap that I had cut off to fill in that corner so it doesn't look like it's really missing anything. It looks like it was intentional to leave a blank space. So this is cool. This might not always work if you have pattern that's directional, but in this case, it worked out perfectly. So I just took that little corner that I had chopped off, lined it up onto the bottom corner of the card, and look at that. It looks like a continuous pattern, really cute. And then I have those two little shimmer strips on there. So I did the same thing for the other piece and had the pattern going the other way so that everything was upright with that little extra piece in the top left corner. And then I added those shimmer strips as well to create a space for our sentiment. And then that's all I'm gonna do to these two cards. This is really cute. I really love the way these two turned out. So here's a look at these two cards and you can see how the continuous pattern sort of runs from one card to the next and you don't lose out anything. 
super cute. I love this design so much so that I did it again with another piece. So I did the same thing. I cut this little house diagonally in half. And again, what I really love about this is that you're still getting the full image of this design. You're not losing out on anything. So you can still tell this is a cute little house on both pieces that we cut. So here is a look at the second two cards that I had made. All right, now it's time to do some sentiments. We've made 10 cards and I'm just digging through my stash. I have all different brands here. I've got Ulta New and I've got Gina K. And I'm just gonna dig through and find a couple of sentiments that I think will coordinate nicely with my Easter cards. So I ended up stamping a bunch of Easter blessings, sending hugs and happy thoughts, and happy Easter. So I ended up using two different Gina K design sets and one Ulta New set for my sentiments. So once again, here we are mixing and matching with all the different types of product and brands. So I, I stamped my sentiment with Versafine Onyx Black Ink, which is a black pigment ink that takes a little bit longer to dry. So I decided to heat emboss my sentiments with clear embossing powder so that I don't end up smudging the ink on those sentiments. The heat embossing will trap in any of the wet ink and then I don't have to worry about it. So I'm just funneling my embossing powder extras back into the jar and I've got my heat tool here and I'm just running it over my sentiments until the embossing powder is all smooth and melted and then we've got these cute little shiny black sentiments. So I'll take my paper trimmer and I'm just gonna cut these sentiments out in various forms. I'm gonna cut some strips. I've also got a couple of punches. I'm gonna punch some out with this sort of label tag punch. And then I'm also gonna do a little bit of fussy cutting too. For the sending hugs and happy thoughts, I just kind of bubbly cut around the letters as if it was like, you know, like a word die that cut this out. So, and I'll just pop those all on to the front of each of the cards. Some of them I popped up, but some of them I glued straight down. And when I use foam squares, I, I put that little extra adhesive on the back to give it some extra stick and chance to move it if I need to. And then we're gonna call it quits. That's gonna be it. I'm just gonna clean up and then we'll take a look at everything we've made. This cute little vacuum is amazing for picking up those little pieces of the release paper from the foam squares. Okay, let's have a quick little recap of the products that we used and a look at the cards. First, we have the paper. The Mente Spring is here, six by six pattern paper. And then I also have the P13 Ephemera Bits and Pieces, and this is the Spring Collection. And then here's that Recollections paper pad. It's a 4.5 inch by 6.5 inch shimmer cardstock in these gorgeous colors. For the Happy Easter sentiment, I use the Gina K Design Spring Joy mini stamp set. And then for the Easter Blessings stamp set, I use the Gina K Designs Spring Greeting stamp set. And then finally, we have the Alta New Beautiful Day stamp set for the sending hugs and happy thoughts. And here are our look at the cards with their sentiments. We have this one with Happy Easter. We have these cute little window scenes. Super delicate, I really like those. And then we have the rainbow stripe with the little friend in the corners another one of those cloud ones and then we have the diagonal striped ones I love the way these ones turned out because I didn't have to choose a side or a piece of the pattern paper I got to use all of it and so that was really fun if you are interested in any of the products that I used in today's video you can find them all linked in the description box down below if you're shopping in Canada, you can check the products out at Hollow Tree Hobbies Craft Store, or if you're in the US, I'll have links for scrapbook.com as well. All right, that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend it here with me. I appreciate the support as always. Coming up on screen are a couple of videos I think you may enjoy. Have yourself a lovely day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.